Let's look at several mechanisms of fragmentation when forming ion fragments in a mass spec. So first thing we need to, do, need to do is locate the position of the radical ion. Where is it most likely to be after we ionize? So we, um, in electron impact ionization, we will take our molecular or our molecule, our neutral molecule, expose it to an electron beam. It will form the molecular ion and where does that ion charge go? The molecular ion is also a radical, so we put that radical symbol there. Um, and the, the rule of thumb is the electron is going to be moved from a high energy orbital of the molecule, and it's generally going to go in the order that we have drawn. So the highest energy is the most likely to lose an electron first, and then the least likely followed by sp bonds, single bonds below that for sigma cleavage. Um, but if we're talking about an ester, for example, the sp2 lone pair will be the first to ionize. So that lone pair gets the ion. And if, if we don't have an sp2, we just have an sp3, well, this bromine, the lone pair on bromine would be the first to ionize for this particular compound. And then on the right hand side we have styrene and the double bond is, is less stable than the, the, than the benzene ring and so it's going to have a high energy orbital that's likely to create a radical ion from there and then you can go into your cleavage mechanisms although with styrene you could just you're going to get a big molecular ion from the formation of an ion in the, in the ring pi system too. So both are occurring um, to some degree, but the most likely is the, the one in that in the order we have um, listed here is the most likely to occur. So let's do a few examples um, of fragmentation pathways. The first is known as inductive cleavage, um, also known as heterolytic cleavage. And what that means is two electrons are going to move together at the same time and it's going to be favored with electronegative atoms so like this halide that's been ionized here um, would tend to do inductive cleavage by putting that bond back onto chlorine as a lone pair forming a chlorine radical we have a little script I here to indicate inductive cleavage and so we lose chlorine we end up with an ion in your mass spectrum that weighs M minus 45 and that's going to be at mass to charge M to Z um, 43 for two methyl groups and a CH, so 30 plus 13 there, so M minus 35 if this is the molecular ion. And if we have an ether or uh, um, any other heteroatom here, heteroatom being something other than carbon and hydrogen, you're going to have the same likelihood. So here uh, we've shown the formation of that same ion with this ether, that M minus 45 here, but it's still M to Z is 43. It's the same ion, but we lose 45 off the mass of the molecular ion because this thing weighs 45. So the thing that we're losing is the 45, but what we see is the ion. We have to see the ion, not the radical. But that uh, lone pair goes back onto oxygen, breaks the bond, leaves the carbocation in the secondary position. W to a lesser degree, we would also see inductive cleavage here heterolytic cleavage to form um, the ethyl cation here um, but it's going to be less abundant because it forms a primary versus a secondary there's a primary there's a secondary cation and then we lose 59 because this bit weighs 59 we don't see it though uh, m disease 29 in the final spectrum okay so that's inductive cleavage alpha cleavage is also known as homolytic cleavage and it's a three electron process. We're going to use half arrows to indicate single electron movement of radicals here. And so if we're doing alpha cleavage, here's alpha away from the, the ion. There's the alpha carbon, there's a beta carbon, there's a beta carbon. So alpha cleavage occurs between the alpha and beta positions away from the functional group. And it's sometimes indicated by a squiggly line there wherever the cleavage occurs. And so we could also indicate here inductive cleavage occurring at squiggly line there and there. So that's where the fragment, that's where the tear happens when you fragment. But for alpha cleavage we indicate like this. And so what happens? The radical meets in the middle, one half arrow, one half arrow, and then one radical left over. What do we get? We get a chlorine here 
with a plus one formal charge. And then we get the radical CH3 group left over. This is M minus 15 because um, the part that we can't see, the methyl weighs 15. Okay, so that part goes away. M minus, if this is the molecular ion, M minus 15 would be an alpha cleavage pathway. We can put an alpha there to show that. We could take that same ether we saw a second ago, do the same thing to either side, doesn't matter, but here's the alpha carbon, there's the alpha carbon, there's the beta, there's a beta carbon from the alpha, there's a beta carbon. So just alpha to beta, alpha to beta there, and all sides. So the cleavage occurs between alpha and beta, can occur in either of those three positions. Let's show it occurring on this side. And so meet in the middle, three electron process, half arrows. We form a double bond to that oxygen. Oxygen making three bonds gets a plus one formal charge. Lone pairs don't go anywhere. You don't have to draw them. You have to draw the formal charge um, there. And the radical that's being that's participating in the mechanism, we can draw that in there just for the heck of it, or I guess more appropriately, we could draw it here. Um, and what are we left over with? methyl radical this is an M minus 15 peak as well so that part comes off with a single electron that's represented by that arrow okay the single electron left over these two half arrows meet to form that pi bond in the middle we could do alpha cleavage with other functional groups doesn't have to be alcohol or alcohols amines can all do this uh, here's a ketone that's been ionized here we ionize the lone pair, the sp2 lone pair. Where's our alpha carbon there? There's our beta carbon. And so alpha cleavage, we meet in the middle. Electron left over, what do we get? If this compound, this species here, the ion that we can see, what can we not see? The ethyl group that falls off, CH2, CH3. So this is M minus 29 for an alpha cleavage here. And we could all easily do alpha cleavage the other way too. We did this one, we could easily do the other way and lose M minus 15. A McClafferty rearrangement um, occurs whenever you have a cation and you have the ability to form this six membered ring transition state in order to um, make the reaction go. We can count, we can say, well, we have a alpha, beta, gamma hydrogen here there's the gamma hydrogen from carbons away from the double bond there and so then how does it form well the McClafferty is more than a two electron process what we have to do is form a bond to hydrogen with oxygen this bond has two electrons one of them goes back into a pi bond that forms from the breaking of another sigma bond. So let's look at this. So what happens? This side remains unchanged except for the fact that we make a bond to hydrogen. That means oxygen's making three bonds, it gets a plus charge. So these arrows here result in the formation of that sigma bond and the breaking of the sigma bond from carbon to hydrogen here. The remaining electron, two electrons in this bond, the remaining electron in this bond goes to form a pi bond with a neighboring bond that also breaks to form a pi bond. And we end up with an even mass ion when we normally, an even mass fragment here when we normally have odd fragments for an even molecular ion. So anything without a nitrogen, without an odd number of nitrogen is going to give an even molecular ion. We normally have odd fragments from that. With a McClafferty rearrangement you're going to see it because you're going to notice this and we left off the methyl radical there, the methyl with the radical um, left over. And we don't notice and we notice the McClafferty because of that even mass fragment because we eliminate a stable alkene um, as we go there. And so as we're tracking everything, 
there is where the radical ends up from the bond breaking between what, what is now the alkene and the alpha and beta carbons there. So between alpha and beta, one of those electrons forms the radical, one electron um, goes back to form the pi bond we see here, and it, it is also between the sigma bond of the carbon hydrogen breaking, those two meet to form that pi bond that we see. Okay, so it's two, four, five arrows involved, and we have to have this six-membered ring arrangement for the McClafferty to be viable, but they're very easy to spot, and they can tell us that we have this feature in our molecule. Okay, last thing we'll see here um, is loss of water from an alcohol, and so um, the book that I use um, for class has the wrong mechanism for this, so we need to see this. What we have is an inductive cleavage that occurs here, electron pair back on to oxygen. So we end up with an alcohol very favorable to do loss of water for this reason. So inductive cleavage puts a lone pair back onto the hydroxyl. The radical ion does a two electron or one electron process. Two electrons meet, one electron goes back onto carbon here. So we're forming this bond here, that's H2O, we lose water, and we end up with a radical where this electron goes back onto the carbon backbone, and then where the oxygen was, the OH was here, well now that bond is left, so the cation remains here. And you're also going to notice that this is an even um, mass fragment. So they are easy to spot as well. And you're going to see with alcohols, very low molecular ion will be present. So this guy will be a very low abundance. You may not even see it, but what you will see is an even mass frag a fragment that represents M-18, which is here.